Hi. Hi. We have Thomas Linders once again, our, our water expert. And um, today we'll be talking about water and municipal water. I'm just explaining a bit more on what is it we are drinking and using in our homes and on our skin. Thomas, give us a brief introduction on what your experience of water was and what can you share with us? Yeah, I guess there is uh, two things I'd like to talk about. Um, water uh, that we get in our taps from most of us use municipal water. Um, we use that as uh, to drink, uh, to cook with, uh, to bath in, to shower mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. Um, and last time we uh, looked a little bit about how we are reusing that water. Now let's look at the water um, quality that comes into the house. You know, uh, we here in many of the cities we got excellent water. Um, uh, drink rather water from the tap than bottled water. Um, whilst I agree that bottled water is uh, a great, um, almost a crime towards the environment uh, because we're putting water into plastic no, no plastic is completely um, uh, devoid of uh, leaching uh, chemical softeners into the water and then we have throw bottles away um, uh, that cause even though we recycling uh, many of those bottles don't actually be are recycled so um, yes, we should drink uh, the water that is supplied into our houses, but the way we get it at the moment, there is, I see two problems. Mm -hmm. The one is that uh, they are loaded with chemicals. Um, the least that is in our water is chlorine. In many of the first uh, world-class cities, chlorine is um, uh, replaced with ozone treatment, which is a way better. Um, a treatment but in Johannesburg as we speak as the we water as far as I know not I knew of one plant in Durban that used ozone uh, to treat the water and of course we're using chlorine to kill any traces of uh, bacteria that uh, would uh, mm. negatively affect us okay but wow. uh, but uh, they don't all, they also don't um, only treat the, the, the bad bacteria they also uh, destroy the beneficial bacteria. So does that mean when I shower the chlorine is actually absorbing into my skin and killing killing the goodness <laughs> on my skin? That yeah. is uh, uh, definitely our skin is our largest organ. Wow. Um, yeah. Our skin is not waterproof. We absorb water especially if we obviously bath uh, but many of us spend uh, more than three minutes under the shower which uh, which is should, uh, um, from a water saving point of view. Um, but uh, yeah, we do absorb uh, um, water into our skin and with that everything that is into, in the water. Our skin, on our skin is a, a very delicate balance of beneficial microbes um, uh, that are necessary to, do, to be there, our, our, our um, skin flora. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, helps us uh, keep our skin healthy. And obviously with excessive uh, um, chlorine in the water and even disinfectants in our soaps and so on, we are destroying that and that is to the detriment of our health. Okay, so that's why when I swim in gym and when I shower, I keep on feeling uh, flakes of stuff falling off me. It's actually all the, what was once alive microflora is now deadened and Peeling off. Well, so your body does reproduce it, but if killed on constant basis, yeah. it's not reproducing it fast enough. That's right. Yes, and uh, with all our other environmental pressures onto our our bodies, mm -hmm. uh, um, mm -hmm. we have less and less the ability to really um, establish a proper microflora on our skin, on our scalp, and everywhere. So that so is, that is basically what happens externally with municipal water onto our skin and onto our bodies. And I believe also the main, um, the main cons using of the water is drinking it and making tea and cooking food with it. Yeah. And what happens then? Well, that's again another, pr again, we have the, the, the chemical um, uh, 
contamination, I should say so. Um, Waterworks would probably not agree with me, but for me, chlorine and any other uh, chemicals that are added there, such as fluorides, uh, in certain cities, fluorides are put uh, added to it, um, and also I believe uh, some certain uh, dehardening agents added to water to so it doesn't clog up the pipes. That's right. Whatever that chemical is, yeah. but uh, again, it is something that you won't find naturally within water. Mm. Um, and uh, so that's the one aspect that you're drinking this and uh, that gets absorbed obviously into your body um, and uh, secondly water has been pumped through pipes over many many kilometers and if you look at the nature of water um, uh, water always moves in rhythms mm. it always um, Meanders. Uh, meanders. It, through a natural uh, landscape. Yes, it creates vort vortices, vortexes, mm -hmm. um, both on a on a um, uh, horizontal level and mm -hmm. on a vertical level. Um, uh, what, what do these vortices do? What, what is what, what happens when a water falls from a waterfall or tumbles around the rock and meanders around the river? What does that do to water? Why is that so important? Why does nature does it? Uh, we, we all know that uh, water, we've learned at school, is H2O. Mm -hmm. So it is, uh, um, means that there is uh, a hydrogen uh, molecules and mm -hmm. an oxygen molecule. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are at different angles. Um, to okay. to, they can be at different angles to each other. Um, and uh, when water goes through a vertical movement, uh, spins in other mm -hmm. words, um, it uh, realigns the, the angles in such a way that us as biological beings or all biology uh, within the world uh, can absorb it better into ourselves. Oh. Um, so Thomas, the um, two and a half liters of water that we drink every day, I, I really I don't feel like I'm nurtured at all. I feel like there's, there's nothing in that water. No. Why is that? Well. That could be because it is not water that is alive. Uh, alive in a sense that uh, um, it, the, the structure of the water is not clustered. So the, the hydrogen oxygen bonds are in a way that our cells can't uh, absorb properly. Um, and uh, you've noticed before when you go and drink from a mountain stream or from a waterfall how uh, you don't even need very much water, you're hydrated mm, very mm, quickly. Mm, mm, um, wow. So we, I guess, want to um, emulate that a little bit uh, in our house um, to uh, get a similar quality of water and that we can get through vortexing, well, ideally first filtering your water, um, especially filtering where the water comes into your house, so the water that um, bath in that you shower with is uh, already treated as well mm. um, and then the, the water that you drink uh, as you have explained is easily either agitated with uh, a stick to create a vortex uh, both uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise a couple of times so can i just explain so what, what thomas means is if we take the water in a jug and we just give it a spin with our spoon Clockwise and anti-clockwise, we replicate the, the natural vortices that the water does when it falls over a waterfall and goes around the rocks. And that adds the aliveness into water and restructures its uh, H2O angles. Um, the best is to see uh, Dr. Motor's work, um, how the water forms beautiful crystals. When, uh, when blessed and <laughs> without going too esoteric or or vortexed water, um, yeah. Or naturally occurring water. He shows yes. very beautiful pictures of uh, spring water compared to municipal water. Yes, yeah. yes. So th there is a way to get uh, our municipal water to rep resemble more natural way through a few of the devices. Yes. Um, very simple, actually. Um, very simple. Yes. Wow. Something well, I can do at home. Well, yes, that is the vortexing, filtering, vortexing. Um, you can even uh, uh, look at trivortex.zia.za. They, they have made a, a disc um, that uh, restructures the water very quickly, very beautifully. Within 30 seconds, you've got uh, 
beautifully wow. restructured water. Um, you can put that also in your bathtub and so on. Uh, so if you really want uh, uh, a good spa treatment, uh, mm. then that's what you could do at home. Yes. Oh, brilliant. Also, I bought a little filter that I've stuffed with <laughs> crushed seashells and crystals and stones. Um, again, not to go too esoteric about it, but as water flows through um, that little filter, um, I get remineralization and recalcification of water and then you know I'm absorbing those nutrients into my body um, I don't believe too much into supplements I really think that we could get a lot out of our garden and our garden gets its nutrients from water so um, in the next video we'll be speaking about um, connection to nature and creating an ecosystem in your garden using reusing your water that's coming out of the bar and looping it back in the system five times um, and then thus creating an, a connection with nature an ecosystem yes that uh, you can reconnect again uh, on a daily basis rather right. than on a, an annual basis when you go for your two three week holiday to the sea or to the mountainside yeah. mm. And uh, I've experienced with my son um, playing in the garden and growing food together. He, he left his PlayStations and TV just to be with the frogs and the, and the plants in the garden, especially the plants that he can eat. So we're talking about not just an ornamental garden, we're talking about abundance and saving of <laughs> food bill and also connection of, with you, your family and your child. Or children. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much. Pleasure and thank you. Good. So, uh, would love to hear your comments. Please scroll down and share your stories with water and what any tips and tricks. Would love to hear from you. Scroll below and leave a comment. Bless you.